The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to Getting to Know You. I am Alyssa Valenti. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the partnership between Catholic Central School and St. Ambrose School in Latham to form a new pre-K to 12-year school called Catholic Central School. And with us today to discuss this, we have uh, Giovanni Virgiglio and Li Lily, excuse me, Spera, um, the Albany Catholic Diocese Superintendent. Correct. And the principal of St. Ambrose School. So maybe for those of you who are tuning in who might not be familiar with those schools, do you want to first say like what those schools are currently, then talk a little bit about that partnership? Surely. So uh, in the Diocese of Albany, we have 21 schools. Catholic Central High School is a 6 through 12 school, middle and high school, uh, presently in Lansingburg. Uh, and St. Ambrose is a pre-kindergarten through grade 6 school in Latham. So they both have the six grades currently. Yeah, so this will be a coming together of those grade levels to form a pre-K through 12th grade school, the first in the diocese's history. Wow, the yeah. first in the diocese, I didn't realize that. So they've always been split in the past? So historically, mm -hmm. uh, our schools and, and the landscape of our diocese has been uh, regionally based. Okay. Right? You have schools, uh, different grade level configurations based on counties and regions okay. of the capital uh, district. Uh, in Albany, for instance, we have K-8 schools and a 9-12 high school. Okay. Uh, in Troy, we have K-5 schools and 6-12 as our high school, and similarly in Schenectady and in Saratoga. The challenge has become that with the evolution of our diocese and the landscape of our diocese, we don't nearly have the same number of schools that we once did. Mm -hmm. uh, we really needed a model that could complement any school, regardless mm -hmm. of geographic location or boundary. Uh, and that's why the Latham campus is so ideal. It really crosses boundaries, it crosses geographic areas. The road infrastructure is ideal where it can service multiple counties and really complement any of our Catholic schools offerings. Um, we have some schools, as I said, that go through eighth grade, some that the terminal grade is sixth grade, some where it's even fifth grade. And so that's why with a pre-K through 12 school, a student can enter at any grade level and be able to experience the continuum of a Catholic education. I can imagine. What's the parents' response to being able to start and stay on the same campus throughout their education? Yeah, so far the response has been incredibly positive. Um, over the years I've had lots of conversations with parents and, you know, it's sad to leave a place that their kiddos have been for so long um, and that is considered home. So I've heard lots of times, I wish, you know, we could just stay and right. um, now their dreams are coming true. So the response has been positive. And, and I can imagine for for that to happen, because I'm picturing in my mind, pre-K to 12, what a wide range of services and things you have to provide. So from what I understand, that campus there, which I did not realize, is huge. huge. So how is that helping, you know, what are the plans? How does that help you guys in your goal? So our campus is about 19 acres, and our current school building is about 21,000 square feet. Okay. So my pre-K to grade 6 is underutilizing the benefits that our building and campus have to offer. So that has been one thing that is super exciting about this project is that we're going to be able to maximize space and have have more families and kids enjoy and benefit from the amazing resources we have in Latham. Right. Um, so the plan, the our goal is to maximize the campus and maximize space, but also keep a natural flow from that pre-K to grade six. So reconfiguring the building so that it makes sense and that way we can have the different sections, but also encourage purposeful interactions between the different grade levels. Excellent. Now I know we just underwent a three-year renovation project here. 
so I understand what that can be as you're going through a renovation and you're coming up with plans and mm -hmm. so um, what's going on with that process and like your timeline and your trend how is that so we're together? looking we're looking at the 21 22 school year as our transitional year okay. uh, the initial phase will be renovations to the existing campus to accommodate the Catholic Central students moving from Lansingburg to Latham uh, so with some minimal renovation to the facility, we can make that move happen. Okay. Uh, so that will accommodate the students come September of 2021. Really though, this is a model for the future of Catholic education. So we're looking at the construction and the future evolution of this campus in phases. And certainly launching a capital campaign to help with the support in raising the funds necessary. But this will be a state of the art campus for Catholic education. And it will have the ability to expand as interest grows. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of interest in Catholic education during the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. We were one of the few um, entities to offer five days a week, full day education in the heart of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We pivoted quickly to uh, remote learning when necessary and reopened as soon as we possibly could. And as such, we saw an increase in families looking to our schools. This year, we saw a 4% increase in enrollment wow. across the grade levels. And so clearly, there's a renewed interest mm -hmm. for Catholic education. Um, I think in some cases, we probably unintentionally put barriers uh, to come and enjoy a Catholic education, whether it be location, whether it be grade level configurations, and we're removing all those barriers mm -hmm. here and really providing entry at any grade level, particularly for our colleagues and our students in public education or parents who uh, start off in public education perhaps or want to transition out of public education. Even public school districts have looked at different grade level configurations and where certain school districts end at a certain grade and call sixth grade middle school others may call fifth grade middle school or seventh grade middle school so that's really where the concept of removing those barriers creating a centralized campus that can grow mm -hmm. with the demand of Catholic education and really whatever the future landscape looks like for Catholic education Excellent. Excellent. Now I know with those high schoolers coming on board, there is certainly that distinction of athletics, and I'm sure that's a concern for the yes. families going onto a campus like that. So yes. how does that fit in for those athletes? I know I was reading one of the articles about this transition, and they had one of the students who's a junior soccer player who was very excited about you know, the new campus. So yes. tell us about how that fits into sure. this. So the campus already, without any renovations, has fields mm -hmm. that we can take advantage of that they don't have in Lansingburg. So with minor modifications, we'll be able to use some of that green space in Latham while partnering um, with some local entities for other sports or utilizing some space um, in Lansingburg. We, our goal is that at the sports programs that Catholic High is offering now are retained in the transition. We know how important that balance of academics and athletics is to high school students, and we want to make sure that we maintain that standard for all families. And even go up beyond what we're presently offering. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what's been very nice in recent years is the collaboration that has taken place among our Catholic schools. Uh, we had the formation of a football team between several of our Catholic Ooh. schools mm -hmm. and facilities have always been a challenge so so this Latham campus allows for you know wonderful uh, amenities and, and, and facilities that can accommodate these sports more importantly too we have so many existing partnerships with mm -hmm. area universities with mm -hmm. our fellow Catholic schools and we'll very easily be able to provide the necessary uh, accommodation and you know facilities for the various sports to continue as the campus grows over time. Great. Well, that's great. And, and to hear about those partnerships is huge. I imagine there's going to be some connection to being that you're in the North Colony School District region. Um, will there be any um, partnering or projects or things going on with the North Colony School District? So North Colony uh, is that will be the district of location for the new school. Mm -hmm. And North Colony currently provides busing for St. Ambrose okay. students as well as special education services. Those would continue, obviously, okay. uh, for the students coming from Catholic Central. Uh, there are very specific deadlines associated with those requests. Mm -hmm. So for families that are considering attending uh, Catholic Central School, 
uh, the transportation request must be submitted to their home school district by April 1st. Oh. Request for special education services by June 1st. Okay. Um, that essentially notifies the district of their intent to attend Catholic Central School uh, and ensures that they have those supports in partnership with the North Colony School District. And to that end too, the, the, the location, the relocation for Catholic Central um, opens up the transportation radius tremendously for the districts that we currently serve. So mm -hmm. at present, Catholic Central uh, draws students from about 23 different school districts in the capital wow. region. And some of the most uh, prominent, uh, or the, those who where the most students come from, would be the North Colony School District and the Shenandoah School District. Okay. So a move to Latham actually helps to facilitate less travel time in some cases right. for our families that are presently traveling to Lansingburg. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you're right off the Northway, right yeah. in that location. You really could not pick a better spot. No. <laughs> um, between Route 7, Route 9, the Northway, it really, you know, if you were to put a a pin in the center of Albany. It really would probably land at St. Ambrose School. Presently. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. Now we talked a bit about the high school um, and you know the benefits that those folks are going to have with the universities and the sports and the athletic programs. What do you see for the pre-K to those fifth grade kids? What are the benefits that might come back to them from this new change? So I see that they get to continue to grow in a safe um, environment that they consider home. So you know we get these kids when they're babies. Um, you know they're three years old and we watch them grow from three to 12 years old and to be able to now watch them finish their you know education career before they go to college in the same space so I see that as a huge benefit mm -hmm. and the purposeful interactions between the little guys and the older kids um, to have those peer relationships um, I see now our sixth graders take the role of the leaders in the building and um, that they will be able to also develop those peer relationships with the older students I think is beneficial. Athletics too is another benefit that our families will be able to take a part of. Um, right now elementary schools it's very limited when it comes to athletics. Um, a lot of programs offer like a CYO basketball for the elementary mm -hmm. kids but it's very limited in the school setting so now we'll be able to take advantage of those in the school for the kids. I would also add that uh, presently, um, you know, for the, the, the spiritual aspect of this, right? As students continue on in high school and prepare for confirmation and continue to grow in their faith journey, to have the linkage to St. Ambrose Parish, which will now be part of this school community, and for the little children who had their first communion, first reconciliation, to be able to continue that journey mm. in the place that they called home really provides a unique experience. And, you know, I think we're going to be able to see that growth, as Lily pointed out, um, in, in the full journey. I mean, I, as a, I, prior to being superintendent, I was a teacher. And you know, you have your students for one year and then a principal as well. You have yeah. them for a certain number of years, but then eventually you have to kind of send them off to their next destination or mm -hmm. next school. This is an opportunity for them to continue to grow with a place that they have called home since, you know, in some cases they were three years old. Right. Now, I, and if I read correctly, um, Catholic Central School right now just has a chapel. Correct. So this is like a nice change for yeah. them too. They'll have a Most full certainly. parish. They connected. do. Um, their mass services right now in the gym for when they do school masses. So right. that's going to be something that's a big change for them. Is we will be able to hold. We have school masses once a month in the mat church right now. Um, mm -hmm. So they'll be able to do that as well. When you look at the campus, too. Um, the, the parish is the heart of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the school itself is surrounding, surrounds the parish physically, you know, the, the, when you look at the actual configuration of the building. And so I think it just is a symbolic representation of the role that faith plays in all of this endeavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great opportunity. Now, I read something that there was like a futures committee or like a group that kind of got together. Like, there's been a lot of thought that it went to how this is going to happen and sure. what are the important things to see sure. when it comes together. I, so, yeah, I can provide some of the, the, the context, and then certainly Lily, who serves on the futures committee, okay. can offer some context <laughs> as well. So, in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, partnered with the Capital Area School Development Association, CASDA. They're a local okay. uh, professional development association that works with school districts. Uh, 
to do a study of uh, Catholic education in the Diocese of Albany. Mm -hmm. They put together a series of recommendations and delivered those recommendations in 2019. Uh, one of the recommendations they put forward was the formation of a pre-K through 12 centralized campus. We put out those recommendations to all of our school boards, to our principals, um, as they locally start to plan for the future and do their own strategic planning. Uh, Catholic Central High School and St. Ambrose really embraced the recommendation of a pre-K through 12 campus. That partnership was formed, led to the development of the Futures Committee. Mm. So after those recommendations were made, um, Mr. Signor, the principal of Catholic High, Dr. Bott, the associate superintendent, and Father Kelly, mm -hmm. our, our pastor at St. Ambrose, um, started just forming the strategic plan of how we were going to embrace this action um, and make the steps forward to make it happen. And since then, the committee, which started with the four of us, has evolved um, to bring in different stakeholder representation. So the committee now is made up of stakeholders from St. Ambrose School, Catholic Central High School, and then St. Ambrose Parish. So we meet regularly to discuss how we're going to move forward and we're excited because it's out in the open now and we're able to begin to seek stakeholder feedback from the greater community and get everybody involved into making some decisions. To that end, we actually just launched a survey uh, yep. that went out to all alumni, uh, current parents, uh, prospective families, uh, parishioners, to give us their input. Uh, okay. We really uh, wanted this announcement to be, be public and then allow for our plans to be further refined and defined based on the feedback that we get from right. these key stakeholders. And, you know, there's, uh, if you visit any of the school's uh, social media pages, you can find access to the, the, to the survey, the diocesan social media pages as well. Uh, and so we're accepting survey responses responses uh, for the next week or so, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll use that information to help formulate some of the future plans that we intend to realize. Excellent. Now, if there's, let's say, someone's listening to this or they're reading about it in the media and they're very curious and they want to find out more, are you guys offering any like informational sessions or tours or how does that work for prospective families? Yeah. We can call the schools right now and just talk to Mr. Signor and I. Mm -hmm. um, that's the immediate plan, and we are putting into action some enrollment, strategic enrollment plans that will include registering applications and tours so they can see the campus. Mm -hmm. So, but Great. we've gotten calls since the announcement. Mr. Signor and I have been busy with calls for new families, which is really exciting, um, mm -hmm. that have never considered Catholic education before. So we're always around to chat. Yeah. Yeah, for those families that are, are ready to, to really look at it right now, I would encourage them to contact either school, mm -hmm. uh, place their name on the uh, list of prospected families, uh, and then as we launch the website, there will be information to register, mm -hmm. uh, information about financial aid and scholarships that are available. Right. You know, I, and that's, I think, another key point. I think yeah. that's important. It, you know, it, 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 we recognize that uh, tuition is involved in this, uh, and certainly uh, at the same time, we recognize that uh, we have the means and the support to be able to support families in making it more affordable uh, to attend a Catholic education. So I, I would I would encourage any family that may think that it's not affordable or beyond or, or within their budget to reconsider that and really uh, give us a call. Uh, we're we're able to work with families and you know set up arrangements and scholarships that really do make it affordable for families to provide students with this opportunity. Excellent, and I'm assuming there's probably some information on. The website as well and Correct. places yep. to find that if people yep. are wanting to kind of do a little research for themselves. Absolutely. Yeah, they can they can begin that registration process now. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll certainly have the formal process up and running as we uh, enroll students for September. But in the meantime, certainly there are things that can be done to prepare for September. Okay, great. And it sounds like you're obviously taking new admissions. So. <laughs> oh, certainly. <laughs> and that's really the beauty of this campus. Yeah. Um, it's not, it, it's, 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 uh, it's certainly not limited in the amount of students that it can accommodate as we continue you to develop the plans for the evolution of the campus. Right. Excellent. Let me see. Uh, tuition remaining the same or different um, coming from the different schools? So it'll be a tiered structure. There will be a new tuition structure that is established for Catholic Central School, mm -hmm. and that'll be a tiered uh, structure that looks at the different um, 
uh, grade level configurations, pre-kindergarten, elementary, middle, and high school. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there will be rates, uh, that, but they'll be comparable to the current rates that are currently okay. being uh, offered. I'm just looking to make sure I've got all my questions. You guys have spoken to, I think, everything that I thought of. Is there any, you know, last words you want to leave to the folks listening in to learn more that you'd like them to kind of be their take home today? I would say that um, this is really uh, an exciting time for the Diocese of Albany. Uh, it's an exciting time for Catholic education. Mm -hmm. And we are uh, excited for the opportunities that await us. Uh, and more importantly, making sure that more students have access to a Catholic education. Um, you know, certainly uh, the opportunities that are afforded to students in Catholic education really look to create citizens for the future. Mm -hmm. And we take that responsibility very seriously. Um, and certainly uh, having students that grow with us from an early age uh, and take their gifts to make the world a better place, I think is what we take great pride in, uh, in ensuring that Catholic education uh, remains available for years to come. This really is the future for us for Catholic education. Yeah. Well said, excellent. I do have, um, wanted to just say, um, for more information or to reserve a spot for the 2022-23 school year, you can call St. Ambrose at 518-785-6453 or at Catholic Central High School at 518 Two three five seven one zero zero. Thank you all for joining us on Getting to Know You.